Hello everyone, welcome to Mirror World Friend. This is a channel where we, Mirror World, have some relaxed discussions about Web3 topics with our Web3 friends. I'm Ital from Mirror World Branding Team. Our topic today is Web3 Gaming Scaling Solution Under Bear Market. The keywords here are gaming and scalability. We would like to talk about what Web3 gaming looks like at the time we're in right now, and what are some technological barriers that might prevent us from scaling our gamefight projects. Today we're super excited to have JJ Ortiz, Senior BD at Zebec Protocol, Andrew Watson, Android Developer at Solana Mobile, and Jonas, CTO at Mirror World, to join our deep dive into the technology side of this topic. Yeah, for sure. So, no, thank you, uh, Tal, for that. And feel free to call me JJ. Uh, you know, everybody kind of calls me that. So, uh, and, you know, thanks. Uh, Jonathan's my guy. So, what's up, Jonathan? Uh, hope everything's good with you, sir. Um, thank you. You know, yes, sir. Uh, and Andrew, nice to meet you. I think we were in a call uh, in, our, in the previous or one of the previous uh, Mirror World, you know, um, MMA. So, nice meeting you as well for, for the second time. Awesome, yeah. Uh, yeah, great meeting you. So, oh, go ahead. Sir. So, uh, no, I'm, I mean, I'm the senior BD here uh, at Zevic. I kind of, um, you know, I'm kind of in charge of everything related to uh, just sales and uh, AMA stuff um, that we kind of do over here, uh, partnership related and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we've been working with Mirror World now for a couple months. Um, you know, shout out to Chris as well and the whole team over there. So, uh, you, know, we, you know, we're a continuous settlement protocol. And, you know, we kind of take care and help uh, Solana protocols with uh, providing them multi-sig safe solutions as well as uh, token distribution and vesting services. So, uh, yeah, it's a little intro on me. Yeah, it's great to meet everybody. Thanks a lot for having me here. Um, and, yeah, I'm an Android developer on the SMS uh, Solana mobile team. Um, and I've been doing Android development for about, oh, boy, 10, 11 years now, a long time. So I've seen the ecosystem evolve. I've seen, you know, been through all the craziness in Android, but, um, you know, have been in crypto for a while or into interested in crypto for a while. And it became very clear to me that mobile and crypto was very, very lacking. And so when I had the opportunity to make a very, you know, strong move into uh, mobile and crypto, um, it was a pretty, pretty obvious choice. So I'm really excited to be on the team and really excited to be talking to other builders and especially Mirror World because you guys are doing something that I think is very, very needed. Hi, everyone. Hi, Andrew and JJ. It's nice to finally meet you guys in video. It's really good. Uh, the last time we spoke was over uh, Twitter space. And uh, yeah, a, a bit about myself. Uh, I'm the CTO at Mirror World. And Mirror World, we're building uh, infrastructure for uh, gaming companies as well as web applications. Uh, the idea is you can w build an ISDK uh, very quickly for Web3, especially in uh, context where you want high conversion for your users. Um, and we do that by providing authentication, marketplace, as well as uh, wallet services for consumers. And so we've been very much uh, uh, conversant of the uh, the game space, the game game five space in particular. Uh, because we've also built a few in-house games. We traditionally, Mirror started as a, an NFT project, and then it started to evolve uh, into a game a game, a game project as well, on top of our NFTs, and it started to evolve further into, you know, infrastructure, because we started to experience a lot of challenges on on the on, on the games that we were developing, and realized, I mean, uh, Web3 Web is really cool, and we can see the opportunities, but we're really missing out on the mobile side. And because our games are mobile games, we became very focused on, on trying to solve these problems for mobile users, uh, making it easy for them to onboard, to on-ramp, and also to interact with the chain. So the UX should be really, really smooth. And so I think the standard on mobile is really high. Um, I think it's a it's a good problem, as and we are also seeing a lot more um, efforts, not only from the Solana side, as well as uh, different other providers as well, just starting to move towards mobile. So we're really excited about that. And, um, I'm very excited to be here today as well. Two, one, Mirror World, friends! friends. Yeah! <laughs> I 
I can, I can go first because uh, we're building a game. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, we could we could go ahead and, uh, and I could go ahead and try to answer that. So um, based on some of the experience that we have seen, um, we've seen a lot of games come in to the ecosystem, uh, the web the web three ecosystem, and some really went high and then they dropped off along the way. Um, and they seemed very successful at the beginning, but then over uh, the long term, uh, they, they don't know able to succeed. <clears throat> I guess because um, what was incentivizing the users to play the game was uh, maybe uh, some, you know, I could, I could probably find better words for this, but it was more, maybe more uh, a temporary, um, uh, you know, reward, so to speak. It was not really the fact that the game was able to have a very high retention over a long period of time. So if, if, you, if you want to build a successful game GameFi project, you need to have a, a successful game, a really good game uh, that it should be interesting to play to the user. <clears throat> if the game itself should have a high retention. And then the other rewards that, you know, like, for example, the move to earn or the play to earn are sort of like, you know, um, monetary, I mean, sort of like secondary uh, incentivizations for the user. So I, I think it's kind of a, it's a thing that um, I, I think maybe in the Web3 space at the beginning, maybe more and more projects starting to think about this, but it, it sort of started like you have GameFi, then add the game, you have the finance, then add the game on top, which is kind of weird for, for gamers. Um, because if the game is not interesting, it's not going to be retained users over the long, the long run. So we had to think strongly about this at Mirrorworld, and uh, it's just one of those elements. Maybe we can hear from other 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 thoughts about this yeah I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad uh you're saying you started off by saying that because i have a lot of thoughts in this regard and you know to me i have to i have to i have so many thoughts um <clears throat> you know when i hear game i think the like the first like w an interesting observation is the in there already is game like there is tons of money in gaming already, right? Like big AAA studios are spending millions of dollars. People are spending hundreds of dollars in the games, in games, you know, they're spending thousands of dollars on consoles and stuff like that. And why, why? Because it's fun, right? Pure and simple. People will pay for fun. That is the incentive. That's it. That is all the incentive people need. If I'm gonna have fun, I will pay money for that. We do it all the time, movies, TV, everything, right? Um, and so to me, when, when we start talking about like GameFi as like play to earn, you start mixing incentives, right? So now why are you playing? Are you playing to make money? Um, and or are you playing to have fun? And as soon as you introduce the fi finance, you know, the, the finance element of like, oh, this might make me money, it introduces a whole new set of, you know, weird things like, you deal with pumping, you deal with people like having expectations about what will and won't make them money and that sort of thing. So um, I 100% agree, uh, Jonathan, with what you said about like, to me, the place to start is not how are we going to make money or rather, rather, how are people going to make money from the start? Like, let's build a token and just assume it's going to go up, right? Uh, the place to start when you're talking about a game is make the game fun. Pure and simple. And if the game is fun, then people will spend money on it. And then from there, an economy can develop out of the value that people feel for that game and, and what that, you know, what that game brings to them. You know, it's like every game economy that is not run by the publisher up to this point has developed organically. Like probably the, the biggest example was like, um, was it uh, like, well, you, you think of people selling like the World of Warcraft accounts, right? Or mm -hmm. Um, like Diablo, wasn't it? Was it Diablo that had like the whole like uh, app, the third party market that was like not officially sanctioned and like all this stuff? And, but like people were selling these super, super valuable weapons and stuff like that. You know, that was completely unsanctioned. And that all happened organically. But that was because the value was in the game and not in the making of it. So I think if, if, if we're okay having that as our baseline, I think we can talk about a lot of things. But as soon as it's like, well, let's figure out a place where people can. Uh, play a game and make money, and they're equal. They're equally beneficial. It's like you're mixing incentives, and I think you're you're looking for it's. It's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really hard. And I don't think, I think, I think the market is showing that it's not working. <laughs> I agree with literally with both the uh, Andrew and Jonathan said. Like, I mean, 
you know, uh, it all comes down to the game, right? Like, I mean, if, if the game is just trash, I mean, you know, there's, you know, I guess no incentive to really play it. And you've seen all these Web 2 games. I'm not the biggest gamer myself, but, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I don't know, out of the games I've played, I don't know, like 2K or FIFA or even, like, Con, right? Um, like, all these have, um, you know, pay people spend billions of dollars across the world to buy, you know, their favorite guns and their favorite, you know, players and attributes and they don't own it, right? But they're just buying it just because, you know, it'll it's fun to play with, you know, Michael Jordan at 99 overall. They want to kill, you know, everybody on uh, on the field or on the basketball court or whatever it is. So as long as, kind of like you said, Andrew, the game is, you know, the, the foundation of everything um, and you make the game as, as good and as Kind of, you said people pay for entertainment every day of the and you know spend billions of dollars on it. So as long as the game is good, building the the you know I guess the financial is just uh, the financial part of it is just a cherry on top, and you can just keep building or just basically around the game. I would say so. Um, yeah, I guess I mean uh, jumping on something that Jonathan said, uh, he you know there's game five projects coming all day, every day out, right? So and kind of like you said, a lot of them kind of went up and then just kind of like disappeared. So uh, touching on that, like the team has to be you know good, you know the you gotta have um, some people that are just willing to give it all and sacrifice and kind of be um, what is it just uh, just um, committed right to, to just building and building no matter what the condition is in game five i feel like you know probably a lot of people with the bear market are just like ah whatever like you built this game and you know we're just gonna quit after it if the you know if the token's not doing well or whatever it is so um i don't know i, I definitely and it's one of the reasons i like mirror world so much is you know i you know i love working with chris i love working with jonathan so uh i know the team is is committed uh in a long-term fashion which is very big in my opinion Yeah, just one, one, one more thing. I think you, you, we gave some examples about like successful games in the GameFi space, like uh, Steppen. I, I think Steppen, even without the tokens, is like a really interesting game. Um, you know, like uh, I think there's an equivalent for this in China. You might be aware of it, how called uh, We Run, the WeChat Run thing. So oh, yeah. every 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 time you walk, like you can see all your friends like steps. You know, so there's this thing. There's this like applet on WeChat which mm-hmm. will track your steps everywhere you go, and at the end of the day, it will, at like 7 p.m., it will send out like a notification of all your friends' steps, and you see where you rank. So like even even without like being incentivized with, with tokens, like you feel like oh man, today I just walk like 2,000 steps. Maybe maybe I should I should walk 10k. I mean, and so you, yeah. I found myself you know always trying to compete with different people. You know, he, he, and this alone it, it was it, they didn't build it as a game. But it felt competitive. There was this one guy who was walking fifty thousand steps a day. I'm like, what is this guy doing? You know? Yeah, um, yeah it, it, that was interesting. So, <laughs> Stepan took that and made it, you know, incentivize people, which is good. Mm-hmm. So, with all due respect to Stepan, um, I think they are a perfect example of everything that we're talking about, but not necessarily in a good way. Because I got into Stepan, uh, I still have it, but I have not been using it. When I got into Steppen, the shoes were going for about $800 US. And that was like a good price because, you know, the hype was huge. The GST token was like $2, right? So, you know, you're like, you're like, I'm walking and I'm making like 80 bucks just walking a few steps. You're like, this is incredible. Well, now that shoe is worth 50 bucks maybe. And the token is down to three cents. And so do I feel... Like, like I have lost a good chunk of money, and I'm sure I'm not the only person, right? So now the question becomes, what incentive, you know, what incentive do I have to keep playing the game? Not to mention, like, you know, when you're earning money, there's kind of like weird tax implications. Like, you know, it's like it should be taxable, and you got to think about that. It's really tedious and stuff like that. So, so the question is, like, why should I keep playing Stepin? The token is not worth anything. Effectively, it's a few cents, right? My shoe has lost massive amounts of money. When am I ever even going to get it back? I don't know. Now, I have the mindset that I'm fine losing money, you know, on things. Like, I was, it was an experiment for me. I wish I hadn't. I mean, I look back and I wish I hadn't bought the shoe. I wish I hadn't taken the tokens. It's that simple. You know, so it's like, 
that's not good for Stepple because now you have just completely lost me as a user and there, th there's no communication. There's nothing that says, hey, no, 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 Andrew, stick around because we have a way for you to get value back, right? It's awesome that it helped me walk a little bit because I do want to do that. But, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I have a little, I have a hard time with it because it's like, Stefan is a prime example of where it's like, if the only um, motivation to use the app is getting that token, how is that token not going to be driven to zero? Because you've got buyers and sellers on either side. And if everyone's earning, everyone's going to be a seller and the value is just going to plummet. So, you know, it's, it's a, to me, it's, a, it's an actually a really good example of doing it wrong. I'm sorry, Stefan, but it's just the case. <laughs> I've gotten burnt. If you had a, if you had to give them uh, some, I guess suggestions on how to improve. Like you've, done, I've never played Stepping myself. I obviously just know about them just because they're so big, right? But like, if you had to give them some cues, what are what are some of the things you'd uh, you'd tell them? I guess on the gameplay side of things that they can improve, just to you know. See, see, to me, to me, um, a, a a big part of of what's happening in Game Five right now is all these projects start with an exclusive set of NF NFTs, right? We're only going to do 10,000, you know, shoes, 10,000 uh, avatars, whatever, right? Yep. That creates artificial scarcity um, for something that should be unlimited, right? Why on earth do you only want 10,000 players of your game, right? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, those, those, those things, if people are excited about it, they go up in value and maybe there's like a, a big market cap and stuff like that. But let's, let's say for the sake of the argument that there was an unlimited number of shoes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and like that was, that was the entryway into the game, right? So there's an unlimited number of shoes and it's like 50 bucks to get it, right? I'd probably pay 50 bucks for a shoe, even, even if I know it's not exclusive, but it's my shoe and I get to upgrade it and do what I want with it, right? Yeah. Uh, now it's my shoe. I'm buying it because it's a relatively low price of entry. I want to see what happens. And now you can start building levers around like what tokens do what, right? Maybe some, you know, use use the model that existing Web two games are doing. Like they have these really complex economies around like gems and coins and diamonds, and they're all the, yeah. you're playing all these games with things, right? But all of it is is to drive incentives to get certain things. So maybe the GST token is awarded for certain things. It's harder to get, more exclusive. The GST token gets me more awesome upgrades for my shoe than other things. So yeah. you have to walk to get a valueless token that can't be exchanged out of the game. You know, you see where I'm going with this? Like, like for just sure. make make the entry point unlimited so network effects can grow. And, and then easy access to everybody. Because they have to pay hundred for a shoe to get yeah. in. And then it just went down, of course, with the bear market. But that's kind of, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, just talk out about it. But then, but yeah, this would be a good way to. This would be a good time to actually say why what I like about the mural project because, like, we mural uh, we it's, it's unlimited. The number of like mirrors you can generate is, is unlimited. Um, you can mint as many as you want. There's no like cap on like how many on the second generation. The first generation we did this, but the second one's like to enter to play if you've never played the game and it costs fifty bucks. Um, mm -hmm. You can buy buy a mirror. You can upgrade it. It has. It's like it's it's, it's I, I I thought it was really interesting and for me I, I feel happy because I actually bought a bunch of mirrors I haven't played the game yet because it's you know it's still in public beta we tested it but you know I feel good about it I feel excited about it you know it's not it's not like because I did actually buy the step and shoe I bought it and then I had it for a while and then the, well, for me actually why I stopped using it was because I have to keep holding my phone I preferred if I could put it on like a device like a watch or something so. I can try. I don't have to always watch, carry my phone when I go out to walk or something like that. But yeah, I mean, uh, to Andrew's point, like the entry point should be very easy for for a lot of people because we lose a lot of people on you know on 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 this on these kinds of projects if there's a huge a high barrier of entry. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the first thing that comes to mind is building a game is hard. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, just just plain and simple. Building a fun, playable, you know, game that people will enjoy has a lot of moving parts um, and a lot of assets and a lot of you know. I mean, it's not easy. Even though there are a lot of there's a lot of great tools that make it a lot easier. A lot of tutorials. Like you, know, you and I, if you're a developer, you could probably download Unity and you know um, 
uh, you know, watch some tutorials and get somewhere. But to make an actual game that people want is so, and then and then on top of that, you're dealing with the blockchain. That's also not easy. So and the finance uh, and, part of it, I'm assuming you just add that on top of it, and it's like, oh, you know, yeah, I don't even want to yeah. know. This is you, Andrew and Jonathan. I'm I'm, I'm a spectator on this topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're stacking two additional major challenges yeah. on top of an already major challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And there's also like the operational like side of things. I, I didn't realize that there's actually a, a huge industry behind like the game ops side of things, like just getting people to know about the game and partnering in different countries. It is, it, it's a lot of work. Um, I mean, you could get lucky if you just build a thing, put it on the app store and like it just shoots up to number one. But like a, a lot of work goes into, you know, partnering with like influencers or other gaming people to just get people to find out about the game. So. Yeah, there's, there's also that. Like that, that's another challenge that, that that's involved. Yeah, and we're we're you know m probably a large chunk of the games that we're talking about would have some online element, right? Like because we want network effects, we want community. So there's another challenge, right? You're dealing with servers and backends and, and you know all the you know like um, like there's a game uh, that I I found out about called like Eve. EV.io or EV. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's a FPS. You know, they've got a whole. You know, building an FPS server is not easy. You know, so it's just like there's a lot of challenges. Yeah, and I mean, I, I guess you know, kind of like I said, I feel like this is more of, of Andrew and Jonathan's topic. But like, I guess, I, I mean, I would assume creative wise, like coming up with something that, like, you know, the team is like, okay, I think this is some that, like, every, you know, this is going to be a you know, um, I think that I don't, you know, I think that's super difficult in itself. Just like coming up with an idea, just, you know, kind of being like, okay, this is going to be a hit worldwide across all cultures, across all types of different personalities. Like, you know, this is going to be like, there's only kind of like one, you know, kind of like Jonathan said, there's only going to be one Flappy Birds type thing, you know, that'll mm -hmm. just launch and it's a hit, no, you know, it didn't matter, you know, no promotion, no, you know, or barely any. So, um, yeah, I guess on the creative side of things, um, I just think it's super yeah. just insane how you guys can come up with, with you know, games. Yeah, JJ mentioned one thing, actually, I, I forgot, but um, uh, Amiro, we spent a lot of time actually designing the, the, the story of the game. Uh, yeah, you'd be surprised in the number of brains that come together to create an interesting backstory or like, because mm -hmm. that's what gets people interested. I mean, most the narrative. Yeah, and then the narrative. Yeah, and most most energy projects have a narrative, right? Um, and this this kind of thing. but but also the game. I, I guess maybe that's why the game fi type of thing kind of merged with NFTs, and you know, I think that's kind of how it was. Is it is like the the idea that you can have a narrative for the assets of the tokens that you have, um, and you know, actually implementing them to put them in a game is a lot more work than just to define like metadata JSON for you know for for like you know for the URI on, on the chain. It's a, it's a lot of work. So at Mirrorworld, for example, we have we have to we had to convert all our assets into like three D models, which was a, a, a ton of work. A ton yeah. of work. It was a lot of work, and then also like in the the actual you know, real-time game server environment. We've probably had to refactor our game server for Brawl of Mirrors around three times um, <laughs> yeah. to, to, like, achieve that, like, performance. So a, a lot of work goes into implementing the the actual assets on the game to make it look good aesthetically, you know. We've made a lot of revisions. So, yeah, it's 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 a ton of work. And I don't know, I, I, I think I'm also interested in, in, like, hearing what other people do to solve these kinds of of their problems as well. Well, and, and again, just to just to hammer home the point that we're talking about, like everything you just described is a massive amount of work. And now imagine, <laughs> you know, having a community yeah. that has giving you money for yeah. something, ten thousand exclusive whatever's, and, and now they're they expecting not only to yeah. deliver deliver a fun game, but make that thing more valuable that they bought. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I would never want to take that on. And, and to me, I think that's why you see so many game rug pulls. It's like, it's like, it's just the incentives are not there for the person building the thing to stick around. There's no reason. Yeah. 
And and to that point, what's interesting is I'm, I haven't checked lately, but so it's a, this is a really good timing for me because I, I've really been trying to take like a survey of what three games. It's not good, um, but um, <laughs> but I, I tried to go shopping uh, for games where I could pay a very low price to like get my character and my avatar, and then just play the game and have fun. And one of the games I stumbled onto was uh, Soul Antisy or something like that. And they had these cute little pixel characters. And it's like it kind of like a Terraria slash dungeon crawler type game. And it's like, oh, man, the characters are cheap. It looks good. While I was considering buying it, the site goes offline. Gone. What? The site goes offline. And as far as I can tell, it's not back. And so they run, as far as I can tell. In fact, I'm going to check right now. Uh, so and so and let's see. Yeah, let's see. Okay, well, it's back. So it's back. So maybe maybe I can go buy one. But but for a while, you know, it's like. But I, I wouldn't have blamed them for rugging, and I wouldn't have bet out any money. I'm, it's just the whole point is like you got to look at incentives for creators too, and it's mm -hmm. just the incentive to abandon the project and take the money and run is very high. I would even assume like for big companies like I don't know if an EA wants to ever get on this, which I'm sure they probably would have. Had it, you know, kind of like one of these big. Uh, I don't know like, too much about uh, games itself, but one of these big companies that are in Web two games in itself, like it would be just insanely difficult. But they probably would be the ones with probably the funds and just kind of like the manpower to kind of just take on a challenge like this because you. You know, getting you know two random people with probably no you know funds or anything like that to kind of get into this space, kind of like you said, Andrew. It is literally I do not, I would not want to take that upon you know if I was a dad, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I do not want to do this. Now, now, now that I think about it, you know, to the you know to the to the credit of like you know Web three, we we we're, we're made it easier for maybe different people, smart people, to actually create. You know, uh, the opportunity to create things is kind of you know now a bit more decentralized. I, I guess more more people kind of kind of access it. Um, however, like I think what we haven't done is actually make make it aware. Like you know, if you're going to build a game based on Web three, there's a ton of work that, that goes into it. You, you can't just go in with the the ambition that oh, it's going to make a, a lot of money at the yeah. you know, at the beginning. You know, um, being sober about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you can get like you know uh, people from a few people around the world interested. That you know what we have a designer, we have this, we have a one blockchain developer, we have that, and like deploy and say you're gonna make a game five project. You have not even started, man. Like you, you, you've just you just have an NFT. Like, um, but the, the the gaming work itself is a lot. So if if the team itself is not um, committed to the project. Um, there's no evidence of that, you know, from the interactions with the community, and also, um, you know, that not only just based on the roadmap, but they're actually delivering something that you know community can see and, and work with. Um, it, it, it makes it a lot harder to convince people to actually work on your game, and also as a developer, like you, you're spending a lot of time, a lot of effort. The last thing you want is to not get any feedback on what you're building. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I think this is a, it's one of those uh, challenges that we have. I think more experienced companies, um, when it comes to building games, they, they understand the process. Well, I, I, one of the, we have a company that we provide, a gaming, one of the biggest companies in, in, in China, the third largest, um, I forget the English name, but uh, we offer them an AI you know, language service um, API, and um, we've been working with them for over three years. And uh, they they cannot we cannot announce them they cannot announce us. It's just because the game is still under wraps. They've been working on this for three like, years. Three years, yeah. Three years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, and, but it's it, but we we know when it drops, it's going to be a banger. Like it's going to be a, a big 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 success. So um, it's one of those trade offs that like I, I think if you want to make a very successful game, I mean it, it does take time. Um, but like you know you, you can't go in with the, the, the with the mindset of yeah we're just gonna it's gonna throw in a couple of like guys, and then you know make a lot of money at the and that, and then you have the rug pulls, which is kind of why people are are you know a, a yes, more, more pessimistic you know about about the NFT space. But yeah, I mean we have an opportunity here, and I wouldn't want for us to like you know squander it. Um, well, and and on the plus side, you know, oh, do you want to? Do we need to no, move on? No, that, that's all. That's all. Yeah. Uh, what I'll just say is on the plus side, uh, like you're you're one hundred percent. There is huge opportunity and there is so much excitement around this web three stuff and the possibilities here you know so if people take to heart what we're talking about right and they're sober 
and they do things right. Um, you know, the fact is, is that capital does move very quickly with blockchain. Community is very easy to build, and there's a lot of people excited about this. So, you know, if you're an honest actor and you do things right, you have a really amazing opportunity here, right? Like, it's just that you could build something totally awesome. And I'll make a plug here. You know, you do got to think about marketing and access. Like, if you put a game, like, we're going to have the Solana Saga Dapp Store, right? We're not going to have a lot of apps on there, right? We're not just, you know, it's not just going to be, it's not going to be Google Play. We're not trying to be Google Play. You're going to be a, 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 a fish in a very small pond. If you release your store on Google Play, good luck getting people to find it. If you release your app on the Solana Store, people will find it. You're going to be one of like 200 apps. People are going to find it. Now, you're limited to Saga developers or Saga, Saga users at, at the start, but that might change. So, you know, just think about that, right? Like, figure out where the best opportunity for user acquisition is. And, you know, it actually, it's good to be sober, but it may not be as crazy hard as, you know, like it would seem based on what we're saying. But 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 be sober about it. <laughs> yeah. you got to have the time. Like, you, Jonathan, you said... That that was the third largest, like you know, uh, company in China that you're kind of providing, you know, their guys' technology, and they even took three years, you know, and you know that's uh, you say it's going to be a banger. Well, I mean, they took three years to do it. I mean, how many people are that committed into putting in three years and devoting three years of their lifetime, you know, especially if it's like a ten people team, like you said, you got one blockchain developer, one you know, uh, whatever head of marketing, whatever it is. I mean, that might take you even more. If you don't get no C funding or anything like that. So you just got to be uh, you know, just committed. For context, yeah. three years ago is barely out of the 2017-2018 ICO boom. So, I mean, think about how much has changed since then. You know, Pre-COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, I do. I do think so. Um, I, I, I personally, I, I'm, uh, I've been building tools for, for quite a while for develop, developer tools. So I, I think if, if you make the process easier, then you're able to iterate faster through like the game development process. And uh, I, I think that's, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm just now plugging Miral at this point. But uh, <clears throat> uh, I think that's one of the things I like about the Miral SDK. Like, the, 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 like if, you, if you want to interact with the blockchain, it makes it so much easier um, to just, you know, create a developer account and just go ahead and, and, and create the project that you need and actually test and, and so that, that way you get through that phase a lot faster and then go back to focusing on building building your game and so you're able to iterate a lot faster. So this this kind of tooling can happen at different levels. It could happen with like say the Unity itself is one of the tools, you know, um, and it would happen at different layers. So uh, whatever layer your application or your game kind of, of functions, there could be tools that can make it easier. And that's why I've, I've been a big fan of like, you know, building developer tooling um, or even like, you know, product tooling in particular to just make it easier to go through this development process. So if, and, and nowadays we're starting to see that if the developer decides to use something, they could actually influence the decision within a team or, you know, within a company. So, and that's why I'm excited also about this Solana um, mobile stack because now it's going to make it easy for people to actually start building uh, for mobile using directly on Solana. And if the developer thinks that it's easy to do, it's probably a lot easier to actually onboard an, an entire team of, like, say, a thousand people within a company because they had one successful case within there. So, yeah, it, it is possible to to improve uh, this experience from on the bottom up, you know, to, to, to grow the user, user base, say, on Solana or whatever project you're working on from a bottom up uh, perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's possible from the ground up, but I don't think the way that it's been done is the way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So if if it, if if you if you, if if I this is you know, I'm not a, a business plan person, but if I had to off the cup, the way that I would think about building a a game and stuff from the ground up is kind of taking what we're saying. Focus on the gameplay first. Focus on the game that you're trying to build first. And sure, maybe you can pre-sell something, right? But I would say. Low entry price, unlimited supply, right? So, so sell characters, sell weapons, whatever, but needs to be unlimited, needs to be cheap, right? So lots and lots of people can get in, and then you can start building community, start building hype. People, you know, don't even talk about expectation of you know money being earned, right? Like, don't oversell either, man. 
yeah, the, the economy will come. Say, like, we don't even know what the economy is going to be like. But what we do know is you own your character or you own this thing. And um, come help us build this game. Right. So now now the communities, you know, weigh in. Have the community help with the lore. Have the community help with the... You can actually build it, I think, in a decentralized fashion. But you just have to set the incentives up at the start. And again, if you're like, pre-mint these exclusive 10,000 things that are going to be worth 3x later... You've already shot yourself in the foot if you're going to try and build it from the ground up, right? So um, that that would be my my recommendation. Start with the right incentives at the beginning, and you know, again, if you're building a fun game, it will be worth something, and pe- the economy will come. Yeah, I think uh, kind of to hit on uh, Andrew's point, like you know, it, it all starts from the you know actual gameplay, and I see a lot of uh, you know working with you know, a lot of projects out there and just reaching out to people on a day-to-day basis. So um, some projects just uh, like to overpromise stuff or you know they oversell. Uh, you know, uh, I don't even want to know what the game try world because I honestly uh, I've only worked with a few. But um, yeah, like if, if you're overselling, kind of like you said, just uh, you know, uh, just saying, oh, you know, buy this or cop this NFT or whatever it is, then you know we're going to make you know, you guys tons of money or whatever it is. I think that's just probably the wrong way to go. Um, honestly, I think, yeah, probably like pre-sales, something is good because you would get some sort of capital to kind of work with, um, especially if, you know, the VCs are not there or, you know, try to drop VCs and, you know, capital from the community itself. Plus, you see how uh, incentivized the community is. So, um, or, you know, committed the community is into the game, how much you like it, you kind of get to see, you know, what it is that they want in the game. Um, I think all that is very, uh, is very good. Um, but when it comes to, I guess, just, just the game fight side of things, I would, I don't know, I wouldn't really, or the financial side of things, I wouldn't really touch that until I mark it kind of like how the game's going to look until I'm, you know, certain that the game's, you know, out there and it's going to run smooth and it's going to be good. So, uh, market just the hell out of the game and make sure uh you know the game is is very good and i feel like everything should should flow after that but anything financial you know i yeah that's the part i take just focus on the game yeah in, in, a, in a way like i think to add to andrew's andrew and jj's point i think building a successful game is like it's like i think it's like building a startup as well i mean you, you gotta focus on the on the game itself to build a game that people want which is kind yep. of like the the alma mater of, you know, white sea, you know, make something people want, build something people want. And 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 if 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 you're only building it, you know, only based on the excitement of like, yeah, let's get a lot of people excited so we can like now, you know, get a lot of people to join our Discord and then constantly have these pre mint 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 events. Like, you know, I, I, I get sick of it, right? My DMs are full of like mint this, mint that, mint here, mint there. Like, you know, okay. you know, like, even when it's a legit like project, now I, I, like I, I don't want to see it. You know, I, I want to find it myself. I want to play a game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and oh, and and I think another thing that is is crucial, I guess, on the side of of whoever's playing, of uh, if they, you'll have a lot of people that are joining a game just because they want to make some money. So I think, and and if the game doesn't go well, or like you know. Sometimes I feel like people do not know how much it goes into making the game, but they want to get into the game just to make the money. So I'm saying all to say, uh, you got to keep people's expectations like on check. Like you got to keep them like, yo, like developing a game is very difficult. And, you know, we're trying to build the best game we can just for the sake of all of us. You know, if the game is as good as it can be, everything will kind of flow through. So I think keep, keeping people's expectations on check is is a really big thing. I see a lot of people just saying projects or rugs and all that stuff and they're not. They're just, you know, they're just building at this time and it is what it is. Like, you just, you know, this is the time to build, especially in this market and whatnot and just because the tokens are down is not a rug. It's just, it is what it is and um, you know, I definitely think that people pick, you know, keeping the community's expectations on check kind of goes to not overselling is definitely a big thing. I haven't done a lot of game development, but of course, I think most developers, at some time or another, have like tried to like hack a game together and you know like whatever. I've downloaded Unity um, and stuff like that, uh, and 
uh, built some stuff there. So, you know, I have some experience. I think, you know, I think one of the big things is, um, is just the, 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 probably the biggest challenge for like maybe a developer starting a game is assets, right? Like, like actually making a game that like looks good. <laughs> like game mechanics are kind of, you know, known things or Unity has a lot of things for you, but then it's like, okay, well, how do I make this game actually look decent? Um, and that's hard. And so like that doesn't necessarily help on like the API side, but I think that actually represents an opportunity for Web3, right? Like there's, you know, there's there's not just game, GameFi doesn't have to just be games making you money. GameFi can be new economies around um, how those games get made and what's available to people and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, uh, you know, think about, you know, 3D asset marketplaces uh, with, you know, crypto stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of free 3D assets, there, but then like those can be you know, iffy. So I don't know, like I just think that uh, one thing nobody's looking at enough is, um, you know, game creation. Because right now, game creation is actually something of a black box. Like, that's actually the truth. Like, like there's there's a world of knowledge for game development that is just not unlockable to the average developer. Like, you go to you see these GDC talks, and these people are like talking about things. You're like, how did you learn that? Like, how do you know how to build a, you know, a, a, an FPS engine, or how do you know how to build a physics engine? You know, it's like. There's, it's, there's these very specialized knowledge. We should democratize all of that. Democratize asset creation, asset sharing. Um, and uh, and there's a lot of money to be made. And if you don't know what to get into, start creating assets, right? Like, and sell them, right? Make, learn Blender, learn Photoshop or something free. Get by the way, it's going to be terrible. terrible. Uh, but um, anyway, so it's like, you know, think about that side. Of it. I think that's that's something that's not explored. Yeah, and I, I think on the on the Web three side, uh, one of the challenges we had because uh, we we weren't only working on the game, we also working on products around the game. For example, the marketplace, uh, we're working on like how to authenticate users and, and, and all this, and a, a lot of this knowledge. Uh, when, when we started out on Ethereum, I think it was a bit easy to discover, I guess, but it, it's still a ton of work as well because uh, you know even after you find out how to do it, now you now you actually have to do it. And it's like a lot of repeated work that, that we did for m most of our front ends. We found that we are constantly pulling in these, you know, adapters so we could allow users to connect. And it, yeah, it, it's doable. But if you if you have many products and now your team is spending more time doing the same amount of work, so we try to abstract all of this, you know, into the, into like a single SDK um, that could, you know, now authenticate users. One of the challenges we also found was, especially building on Web three, was now if, if if I'm new to the to the game space, um, I came. Let's say I came because the game was interesting, the, the story seems interesting, and now I want to like actually buy, say, this thing for fifty bucks. But now I have to figure out how to download an extension, and now I have to learn what a seed phrase is. I have to keep it secure from from somebody. How secure is secure? Is the screen should secure enough or? Can I just copy and paste it somewhere in Notepad? Like you know, like now you have to. There's a there's a huge, you know, you, amount of things I need to learn just so I could buy that NFT and so I can actually play the game. So we we, we try to abstract all this into like you know a, a simple SDK. Can I just click the login button? It works with Google or whatever so, you know authentication scheme that works and that will create for you a wallet and like you know you can you can fund it and you can then. Uh, buy the NFT, you know, that you wanted to buy for you know, for so long. Um, so we try to extract all this into like a simple, uh, simple, you know, SDK, a simple like, you know, um, uh, tool that you can use, you can create market like listing and selling things. One of the challenges we had, you know, because uh, we, we started working on Auction House a lot earlier when it was at, like, very few projects were using it. And even the storefront and the documentation was using V1. So I remember spending three weeks, uh, you know, like literally tearing that code apart to like figure <laughs> out how, how it actually works. Um, and That's then, not about right for Solana development. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I spoke to like Bartol and, and to, uh, I think, Ospot. And I, 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 I told him, hey, guys, so I finally figured out how this thing works. But like there's something wrong with the PDAs. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's because I, this is, uh, we're working on version version two. I'm like, wait a minute, wait. So all this time, everything I've been working on has been like, yeah, we no longer use that program, use this program. <laughs> so I, I started, had to figure out how to use the new program. Uh, and uh, at that time, there was no like mature SDK. It was just the, 
the, the, the literally just reading the, the code in the in the in GitHub to build an SDK. I mean, now you don't have to do that with the mural mural API. You just list your NFT. It's, it's, it's so simple. It's really really convenient, and we're we're having a fun time with mural building Web three makes it a, a lot a lot easier. Um, and so, if if we make it again like easy for developers to actually go through this process. Um, again, like they spend more time learning Blender, you know, spend more time actually making the the product itself good for the user. Because again, as a, as a user, I'm I'm not buying, I'm not I'm, I'm not playing. I'm, I didn't download the app so I could like become like a an expert on like wallets and like <laughs> you know, that's that's not that's not why I download it. I, I don't because I just want to play a fun game. And if we if we can get the user to that deliverable as soon as possible. Um, I, I think you have like an, an opportunity, especially if you're if you're listening on your builder or Web three, you want to like you know deliver very good experiences. Uh, if you're thinking about tools that will make this this step easy for users to cons- to to easily consume Web three things, uh, that, that's that's a good opportunity. So yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Well, I, I have I have a couple thoughts in that regard, mm-hmm. um, and, and it, it, it's it's more or less um, reiterating what Jonathan said in that. Um, you know, I, I like one thing I'll say is like it's, it's a cliche, but it really is true. I mean, especially on Solana development, we are really early. NFTs came out a year ago. You know what I mean? Like, so like there is, it's like if if you are developing now, it is going to be a lot of pain. But that does then mean that there's a lot of market opportunity for effectively middleware that can solve the problems that. Uh, developers don't want to have to deal with. Uh, so an SDK like Mirror World is exactly what needs to exist. Um, you know, not having to think about wallets and, and things like that, I think is good. Um, and, you know, what we're trying to do with uh, the mobile wallet adapter, it's like kind of like the key thing in SMS, is to basically offload all of the, um, you know, transactions and stuff like that out of the app. Um and, and so, you know, like the assumption is that crypto users would have a wallet um, and then, you know, they can use that wallet to interact with the game. But that is a key assumption that may or may not be exactly right. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, uh, I think it was Chris, the CEO of Mirror World, had a tweet when he announced the SDK the other day where he was talking about how, like, you know, if you're going to have to sign um, a transaction or something to make a purchase, you know, if, if it takes you out of the game, especially during like the initial onboarding experience, like that is not good. Um, and so like, I feel like it's kind of like we're asking the wallets to help solve that, but there is a way, like people are used to hopping out of games to do things. They just maybe don't realize it. And the, the key example is like Google play billing, Google play purchases, right? Anytime in it, you're in a game and you make a purchase, this I can speak. I can't really speak exactly what Apple does, but on, on Android I can. Um, when you when you are in your game on Android and you want to make a purchase, and that little Google Play dialog pops up, and you make that purchase, that's a different application. But it's sort of overlaying itself and interfacing between the application and Google Play. My hope is that the market will move in that direction, where there can be any number of SDKs, where uh, you know you're in your app and. Um, you know, you want to buy something and you click this and, you know, a little dialogue pops up and maybe it's your wallet or maybe it's the mirror world SDK or whatever. Right? Um, both of those things I think are, 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 ba- are valid experiences and there's kind of no way to get around that on mobile. It's, but people are very, very used to it. And it's not bad. Um, but you know, like the, th- the, 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 the North star, the thing that I hope and maybe mirror world, you guys will create it. What I want to see, I want to see an in app purchase SDK where the items can be a few cents, right? Like, like instead of a dollar being an in-app purchase being like a five cents. And the only way that's possible is with like a crypto SDK, right? Um, so like, uh, you know, so the idea is that, you know, I may not want to spend a dollar uh, on something, even though it's like nothing, but people are like, mm, I don't know if I want to spend a dollar. Um, but uh, I'd spend five cents on something, you know, I'd spend 20, I'd, I'd buy 20 of them, whatever it is, right? And that is absolutely possible with Solana, that is absolutely possible with crypto. So it's like, Someone please make that because I will spend money in. Thanks for watching. We believe that with all the great builders like these guys, there will definitely be a prosperous future for Web3. And we wish the best of luck to all of their projects. Also, for those who are interested in discussing more topics about GameFi, 
we do plan to host more Mirror World friends in the future. So please let us know if you would like to participate in the future discussion. See you next time.